All right, so last video we got this engine kind of finished up. Next I'm gonna be working on finishing up these pipes. So I got this one fully welded and that one turned out okay. But I did make some mistakes on this one and I'd like to try to do a better job on the next one. So I was kind of unsure on what amperage to use on the V-band and I was going back and forth and welding the joints and the V-band and then I was forgetting to change the amperage when I would go back and forth. And then another thing I did wrong on this one was I didn't fully tack it all the way around. So when I started to do the first welds, it split the tacks on the other side and then opened up a big gap. So I actually had to use a clamp to clamp this thing closed and then tighten up the gaps. And part of that issue was just I had really small light tacks on it like this, only in a couple spots. This one's actually tacked a little bit more, but I put just a real light tack on it just so I could move it around and get it onto the table with a plan to go back through and put more tacks on it, but then I kind of forgot about that because I actually built these like a month ago and they've just been sitting on the table. So in this video, I'm going to go through and weld this thing. I want to spend a little bit more time kind of going over the process of welding this and what I do because I know I don't really talk about that stuff that much. So I think part of the reason I don't really talk about my setup and everything that I do is I, I'm not very confident in what I'm doing a lot of times. So I'm not a welder. I don't have any like formal training or anything. This is just stuff that I've learned over the time and had people help me with. So feel free to share in the comments if I'm doing stuff wrong or could be using different material, different tungsten, etc. But I'll show you what I do. So first up, let's talk about the fitment. So I guess any kind of TIG welding, the fitment is going to be very important. So if you look at the fit between these pieces, it's almost seamless. Same over here, everything is just really, really tight. So you can weld over some small gaps, but it's just a lot easier to blow a hole in it if there's a gap there. And I feel like if you're not back purging, it's a lot easier to like pull contaminants from the backside of the metal into the weld. If there's a gap, if it's really tight, it's almost like you're welding just on top of the sheet, so it's not so bad. But we are gonna be back purging this, back purging meaning that I'm gonna be running an extra hose to fill the backside of the material with gas basically going to cap both ends of it and then we'll fill the whole tube with gas and then weld on the outside so what that does is also so what that does is puts gas on both sides of the weld makes it look really clean so like here's the inside of this one and you can see like it's a nice shiny color and even the weld on the inside of the tube looks really clean so the filler rod i'm going to be using is this welding city 308l and it's 1 16th inch in size and i'm just going to be using a number 12 furic cup with a nice long sharpened tip on the tungsten and this is the tungsten I'm using here blue it's got a little blue end on it and that's about the stick out I'll be using I try to make sure the stick out is less than the width of the opening of the cup machine setup I'm going to be using 65 amps on DC TIG for the v-band and then I'm going to use 55 amps for all of the other seams and then uh, I'm using six seconds of post flow so I just use a half a second of pre-flow and then I have six seconds of post-flow. Sometimes I'll do a little bit less, like four seconds. But on this one, I'm not too worried about using a little bit more post-flow. So I'll probably use like a little under 20 CFH on the torch gas. And then the purging gas, I, I'll put at five CFH, just like that. So that's kind of how everything's going to be set up. I'll get this thing capped. Like I said, I'm going to use 55 amps for these seams and then 65 amps here. I might go up to 70 on this one because this one's pretty thick. And then what I think I'll do is I'll do these three welds first and then I'll go over to this one and I'll finish that one so that I'm not bouncing back and forth and I don't forget to change the setting. Because like I said on the other one, I would do, you know, bead, 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 but I would forget to change it to 65. So I'd like start the arc and then I'd have to go back, turn it back up and then I would make the bead and then I would forget to turn it down when I went to here. That's what I was doing on the other one. So I think for this one, I'm gonna go all the way around on these three at 55 and then I'll go all the way around this one at 65 and maybe up to 70. I might try 70 because I was still having issues with this one keyholing a little bit and not completely filling in before I would add the filler. So I might go to 70. And what I mean by keyholing is, is something like this. So like this section is the V-band, this section is the V-band, and this section is the seam where the V-band and the pipe would connect. When I advance the torch forward, it kind of has a melted spot on the V-band, a melted spot on the pipe, but it doesn't completely pull a puddle together before I add the filler. So if it's if it's hot enough, I can advance forward and it will take material from, from the V-band, from the pipe, and it will puddle it together and, I, and then I can add filler. If it's too cold, it won't completely get into the root of the joint and it creates like a little keyhole opening. So then you're trying to 
like add your filler up here or up here instead of being able to fill right into the center at the root of the joint. So I'm gonna probably warm it up a little bit. Okay, so next I just have one end capped and then I'm gonna go over here and cap the other end. So just wrap some tin foil around this. So I think actually what I'll do is, is I'm gonna move this cap over to the other side so I can have my hose over here. What I usually try to do on some of this stuff is I'll try to start the weld on the back side or on the bottom side or where it's not going to be visible as easily from the engine bay. So this should actually be the bottom side. So that's where I'll start doing my welds and then I guess in my head it helps me kind of get in the rhythm of what I need to do before I get to the top side that would be more visible. So if I do have any issues starting or figuring out what I need to do, then I can get it figured out by the top side of the weld. So, we'll turn the machine on. I'll turn the purge to 5 CFH, and then we'll let that purge for a little bit and fill, probably like a couple minutes. Then I can just start welding. 55 amps, and I'll try to start at 70 over here. And I will add, it's it's that's another good reason to have a really good fit too, is if you're purging, the gas is just going to come out of the, the cracks. Like if there's seams here, it's just going to come back down. So you'll be trying to fill it, but it's just not going to come out. So if you're trying to weld on the top and the gas is leaking out the bottom through a gap, then it kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, in the past, what I have done too is I'll, I'll wrap the bottom side of it so it'll kind of force the gas up to the top. I've done that, but these fits seem pretty good. Okay, so here is both pieces together and finished. So you can see there is a little bit of inconsistency at some of the stops. The starting and stopping wasn't really great. There's kind of a booger on that one, so I'm just kind of being overly analytical of my welds here. I did see on the back side, see how this comes down, up and down, up and then down. So there you can really see it. It's kind of curved up. And I think my issue there without realizing it as I'm propping my hand and I'm coming around, I'm actually making an arc while I'm advancing. So so overall, not too bad, but I do like to kind of review and see, see what I could do to improve each time. So you can tell the starts and stops on the V-band look a lot better than they do on the pipe. So I do have a technique for starting and stopping that works pretty well. I just wasn't, wasn't very effective on the pipe joints. Overall, look at the back side of the weld. The joint looks really good. Nice and white in color, so it means I got a good good purge, good gas coverage on the backside. 
And I have no idea where this big scratch came from on the pipe. I realized that kind of after I was welding, but I wasn't going to remake it anyways, but just kind of disappointing. I got a big scratch on it and I don't know how. But the bright side, that pipe's going to go in there like this and the scratch is on the bottom side, so I shouldn't be able to see it. Top sides of all the welds look pretty decent. And I'm sure after I get a few heat cycles in this, it's not really going to matter that much anyways. So this stuff's ready to kind of start going back in. I got all the rest of the turbo jam down here. Then I can start finalizing the rest of the pipes and the mufflers. I did get a special hole saw bit for putting the wastegates on. I'm probably going to go ahead and do the wastegate on the bottom side of these 90s. So once I get the converter, I can start bolting everything back up. I got a Circle D converter on the way. This nice carbide bit hole saw. I bought it just to do the wastegates in the stainless, so hopefully I don't fight with that because drilling stainless can be kind of an animal. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. See you next time.